This is Chris's way of telling me that we need to be done. It's time to go. Bye. They were, they were engineered for ripping meat apart. Um, Which is why you love meat and potatoes. Well, I mean, I like meat because it's tasty. Oh, God. And, um, but, like, my, con my constitution is really crazy, too. Because I can eat raw meat and super undercooked meat. Yeah, and it's just, it's just ridiculous. No problem. It doesn't well affect me at all. Do that. But it's just part of the. My system is much more caveman than it is evolved man. So. And your mom did a really great job of exposing you to um, different things. Sure. Where my parents didn't. It was our meat always was well done. Yeah, she can't. It, like I didn't. She has a hard know. time eating medium rare meat. I didn't which even is know like a sin. It is sin. a sin. It really is a sin. But um, I was not exposed to other types of cooks on meat <laughs> until we met, and then I think don't even think that we did anything until we got married. Like I, I think it took a progression of years for us being together, mm -hmm. for me to go to um, eating um, medium well or medium. Yeah, medium. Because you used to eat medium well. That's what you're. Your family eats medium well steak, and then you got to medium, which is less offensive. Yeah, and now then, I'm, I kind of teeter around you eat, there. You know, a little pink is okay, and you eat some stuff. That's I don't mind medium being. Um, yeah, uh, I don't mind um, um, a, a nice blush pink. Uh, I just can't handle the blood right <clears> now. <throat> yeah, I need to be able to cut into it and. If his doesn't bleed, bleed and then he's just like, it's just, I can't eat mm -hmm. that. Way I'm too like, overcooked. okay, whatever. But um, when we moved to Texas, we um, became friends with Arabics. <laughs> and um, they definitely don't cook their meat um, well done. Most of them don't. There's some that will. But anyways. Well, just like everyone. They're, yeah. Every people in place. Everybody has their own has, opinions has and choices. Has members that abuse meat. So and, my point uh, is, is... um. They have this raw meat dish. Oh, so good. Now, do they call it Kid Bay? Well, it depends on who you ask. Kid B is, I think, the... Don't call it Kid B. It's Kid Bay. You know, I don't want... It's, you know, because it's, it's Kid Benaya is the, yes. other, is the other way to make yes. it. Yes. Which is not Kid Bay. Correct. So, anyway, Kid look B it up. Kid B is an amazing cooked um, ground beef... Oh, God, just talking lamb. about it. Is it lamb? Mm -hmm. And beef, but I was going to say, is it a mixture? Okay. So. We don't need to get into schematics. It's tasty. It is very tasty. And I like kidbinaya, which is the raw Yes, variety. and our friends like to make that for Christmas or New Year's or something. Mm -hmm. And they invited us over. And both of them were like, you have to try this. You have to try this. I'm like, okay, I'll try it. But Chris already knows I don't eat anything raw. Like, even fish has to be cured in some kind of acid for me to be able to eat it. I have not tried sushi raw, um, just because it's raw fish and it makes me, uh, okay. Bleh. I try the dish, and within 20, 30 minutes? 30 minutes, probably. 30 minutes, I was in the bathroom. And I've had this issue before because I've eaten um, medium rare to medium meat before <clears throat> because that's what they offered us and that's what right. they had. And Your so system I'm, was shocked by it. It just wasn't used yeah, to that type of meat. Yeah. I mean, just, uh, yeah. So I looked at Chris after I came out and I was like, dude, we have got to go home. I don't feel well anymore. Everybody's looking at us like, what happened? I'm like, that did not go well with my tummy. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather not be pooping in your bathroom all night. So we will come back, you know, again soon. Just make sure that you eat all of this. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't like that at all. But So, yeah, I, I have a very hard time because my mom always overcooked everything, which is not her fault because she had to learn how to cook herself. And then I had to learn how to cook myself. And so, yeah. Anyways. Then you went to culinary school. And then I went to culinary school. It was the best two years of my cooking experience, life or whatever. I miss it desperately. 
Um, I would love to go back to school just so I could do it all over again. I know it doesn't make any sense to you, but <clears throat> it was just that much fun. It makes perfect sense to her. Um, and there's also a couple of classes that I didn't do as well in because mm-hmm. the concepts were just so foreign. My brain could not wrap around it. Well, there was a lot of classes that you didn't take because you didn't have time to that you would like to. You sure. barely took any pastry classes and you really loved that. I, so, I took three maybe. That was one, two, that's still not a lot. three. No, that's not a lot. I, I did want to take more yeah. pastry classes. Um, and the classes that are probably being offered out here in the San Diego colleges are probably um, different to a certain degree mm-hmm. than what we learned where I went to school. I'm sure they are. So I could possibly learn even more. And um, I just I don't feel like I caught everything the first time. And that's the whole point of getting into a kitchen mm-hmm. is so that you can brush up on those um, techniques and just learn <laughs> and so on and so forth. And perfect them. And- right. But um, I've always wanted to be a mom, and it never occurred to me to be anything else. And so um, I don't want to get a job. I don't want to intern at a restaurant without the kids being older because um, I want to be their mom. I want to be here and hang out with them and raise them and them have great memories of us. And um, there's no restaurant that I know of that would <laughs> allow me to work part time, you know, while the kids I can are work in school. Forty five minutes a day between these two hours. <laughs> um, that should be okay, right? Uh, no, that's not how it works. No, it's not how it works. No. But it is fine. Um, Chris and I are experimenting at home mm-hmm. um, with different foods and things like that. And um, one thing I love to do is take a recipe, try it out the first time, and find the flaws in it. And it's not flaws necessarily of um, how they created it, but I know I can make it better for us and for our palates. Mm -hmm. And so I do so. And then I wind up uh, impressing him. And then I wind up impressing our priest who's Arabic. And that man knows everything about food. Oh, yeah, he was a chef before he became a priest. And right, I mean, their family his wife owned is, a restaurant. His wife right. was an amazing cook. Yeah. So, like, their whole that's their their family culture is yeah. it's cooking just food. amazing food. Yeah. So, any time that you make something for them and they go, oh, this is good, you feel like you've accomplished something. Hell, yeah. Dang, man. Impressing anybody that has more food knowledge than I do, that's... Yeah. That's, um... That's nice. I have yet to do that. What? Impress him with anything. Well, honey, I mean, he's just always going to give you a hard time. And that's yes. just how it's going to be. Yes. You guys have a brother relationship. Yeah. And that's not going to happen. I mean, brothers uh, are always constantly um, ribbing each other, teasing uh, each other, giving each other a hard time. And so um, it's his way of showing you he loves you. Sure. Putting me in my place. Yeah. <laughs> over and over again is his version of love. Mm. Humility, patience. Yeah, he makes sure that I'm humble. <laughs> That's his, mm-hmm. he's told me before. It's one of the things he's put on this earth to do is maintain my humility by continually pointing out when I do things wrong. It's a fun time. Oh, it's really funny is that... It's um, not funny. Maybe not funny, but... Um, He's nice to you. I make the babies. He has to be nice to me. I do have a small part to play in making the babies, too. I would say I should get some credit. I should get some credit for that. <laughs> you work very hard in creating our babies. So, we'll leave that for another time. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Untitled wait. Evenings After Dark. <laughs> But not with Amazon. Mm -hmm. (laughs) No. No Amazon after dark. They're scary. We're not going to use them anymore. Oh my God. They're so scary. Anyways. um, You have not struggled a whole lot with the things that you go out to do. So there's sometimes where you do struggle with your art. Sure. Sometimes you do struggle with your music. Mm Mm-hmm. But for the most part, you have this natural talent and ability just to be able to to do those mediums. And so I think that he likes to 
make you perfect things because he knows that you like to perfect things. Sure. I think he also just likes pointing out when I mess up. Yeah, I agree too. He has this narcissistic thing, which is funny because we're in a church and, you know, <laughs> he likes to be like, stop that. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. He did know. Mm, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he gives you that look. Yep. Anyways, we're going off at a huge tangent that right. you really can't participate in no, that well. So we're don't, sorry. We don't want to talk about so. Ooh. That's probably enough for tonight. Feels like there's just something else. Yeah. Save it for the next episode. I, I, don't, I don't know what it don't is. I, How can I save it? Give them all the good stuff at once. Obviously not, because we're, what, 15, 20 episodes in? Because this will be like 20 or something. So, I mean, obviously the good and stuff... And the good stuff hasn't happened yet, so we're sorry. Yeah, we still have to talk about our, um, would you call it Asian infliction? Affliction? I don't know. We're, it's an obsession, probably. Yeah. Because an affliction is... Like you're afflicted with something. It's not a disease. Mm, We're okay. obsessed with Japanese and Korean culture and entertainment. Yes. So that'll be what we probably talk about next time is our obsession with Japanese and Korean music, TV, film, and animation. Yeah, it, it needs to come out because we've been thinking about it, talking about it off and on. And then something else always comes up and distracts us. So we yeah. have to indoctrinate you <laughs> in that because it's phenomenal. It's amazing. It is. It, it really is, man. And I love the idea that we're passing that on to our kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hope so. If they like it, they don't have to. I mean, not even to the degree of... <clears throat> They don't have to like it so much that they have the same passion and interest that we do, but I just want them, this is Chris's way of telling me that we need to be done. It's time to go. But um, I want them to be, what's the right word? It's right there. It's almost going to come out. The right word is? No. Good night. No. No. Exposed. I want them to be exposed to other cultures, other uh, interests. You know, um, my parents uh, didn't have that kind of exposure. We didn't have that exposure. And if Chris hadn't come along, dear God. I had that kind of exposure because my mom was awesome. Is awesome. Yeah, your mom is but awesome. We will talk about that in the next episode. I'm just giving them a <laughs> little. Don't shish and see me. Not after the weekend we had. Don't, don't, no, no. Ah! <laughs> All right. Say goodnight. It's time to go. Bye-bye. <laughs> You're so weird. You're weird. I'm trying to get you. You're up in my face. Up in my face. It's time to go. Say bye. I'm not away from your face. Who am I saying bye to? The six people that watch <laughs> the <this> show. <laughs> Good night. Thank you for watching our crazy silliness. Mostly her crazy silliness. Yeah. I'm the sane one in the relationship, which should tell you how messed up stuff is. Silliness and such. If we could name this something else, we would name it Shits and Giggles. So if you like that title for our show, please let us know because I really want to change it. <clears throat> okay. Ooh, ooh. We also have a 1-800 number. Or a toll-free number. It's not 1-800. <laughs> we have a toll-free number that you can call if you wanted to leave us <laughs> messages for questions and stuff because it would be really rad to have people call, leave voicemails, be able to play the voicemails on the show and then answer whatever the question is. That would be awesome. So I will put the number up here. Between Mr. Like, Ed Ferguson. Um, between those, yeah, Ed Ferguson. Yeah. Yeah. You need yeah, to do that Ed, for us, man. You can call and leave a message. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Good night.